Before Lil TJ would become one of the hottest new artists out in New York, dropping tracks like the Justin Bieber sample None of Your Love, which has over 14 million streams on SoundCloud, Resume, which has over 15 mil, and Brothers, which has over 21 million views on YouTube. Before he would get co-signs from Famous Dex, Roddy Rich, Designer, and collab with YNW Melly and more. Before he would have close to 150k followers on SoundCloud, close to 200k subscribers on YouTube, and almost 550k followers on Instagram at the time of this recording, Lil TJ has had a monumentally fast rise to fame. But unlike a lot of people in the new era, it wasn't through antics and it wasn't through a label push. It was just through great music and talent alone. At only 17 years old, the kid has accomplished more than most people dream of in their entire lives. After serving a year-long stint in juvenile detention, he decided to take music seriously and well after that, a lot happened. What's up good people out there in the world? I hope you're having one heck of a day. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Jeremy Hecht, AKA, I don't text back. One of these days I'm gonna come up with a killer pun that's gonna leave you speechless, but for now, here we are on Before They Were Famous, and today I'll be taking you through the life and career of Lil TJ prior to fame. I've covered other newcomers like YNW Melly and Comethazine, so be sure to check those out after you finish watching this one if you like it. And as always, be sure to let us know in the comments down below who we should cover next. Without any more talking though, let's get into it. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Lil TJ was born Tion Merritt on 183rd Street in South Bronx, New York on April 30th, 2001. He grew up with his mother and two siblings in an apartment in the Bronx and when he was still young, his mom went back to college to get her degree. He told Pitchfork that he was a problem child, always getting into fights and committing petty robberies in middle school, but he always managed to get all of his schoolwork done. At home, he was well behaved, never even so much as cursing in front of his mother, but when he would step outside, it was blunts, and of course some cursing with his friends on the block. He told Rolling Stone that the neighborhood he grew up in was very diverse, and he even learned some Spanish from his friends. He grew up listening to people like Meek, Rihanna, Rick Ross, and Drake, and he actually met Meek recently who told TJ he was a fan of his music. But the Justin Bieber sample on his record None of Your Love wasn't random. He told Pitchfork that he used to watch Justin Bieber videos all the time and think to himself, damn, this is gonna be me. He says he would watch TV seeing the way that artists live and he would envision himself on that stage. He always felt like he was meant for something bigger than himself. It was artists like Bieber, MJ, and Usher that would later inspire him to sing. He was even nicknamed the Bronx Bieber on Facebook when he first started making music. That's kind of a hard nickname actually. He says that he was also inspired by kids on Disney Channel and Nickelodeon, watching shows like iCarly and Victorious all the time. He told Pitchfork, Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was really into some childish shit. I got friends that were watching Disney, but they would never tell you. Ariana Grande, that's my wife. The street shit felt forced upon me. The real me was at home watching all of that shit. I'm with you 100%, bro. TJ, I still go on record saying that High School Musical is the greatest trilogy of all time. I even got to live out my lifelong dream of wanting to be Troy Bolton this year for Halloween. Shout out to my Gabriella. But before I get any weirder, let's get back to TJ. In 2016, when TJ was 15, he served close to a year in a youth detention center for a robbery case that he doesn't like to talk about publicly. In jail, he played a lot of spades, but it was also behind bars that he started writing some of his most heartfelt and personal songs. He would sing those songs to other people in jail, even rapping some of them for the correctional officers, and everyone had a positive response, recognizing that he had something special. He had two notebooks full of verses from his time behind bars, that would later become some of his most successful tracks. He told Rolling Stone in one of his only interviews so far, it's nothing that I would want to do again, but I learned a lot from it. I feel like if I wasn't to go to jail, I probably wouldn't be the person I am because I wouldn't have sat down and wrote those songs and I never would have been able to focus on what I want to accomplish. He also says that he doesn't want anyone who looks up to him to focus on that part of his life. Unlike many people who shy away from the title, he wants to be a role model. He always wanted to have kids look up to him, and now that he has that influence, he wants to make sure he uses it right. He even encourages his fans to stay in school and focus on the important things. And even though he recognized that he wanted to create change for himself in a positive way, when he first got let out, he was still caught up in his old ways and not focusing on anything productive. He was occasionally recording songs on his laptop that he describes as a more traditional rapping style, but he wasn't taking it too seriously yet. But it wasn't until stepping into a recording studio for the first time 
that he was able to realize a new direction for his music and his life. The first song he ever released was called Don't Gotta Explain with Lil Tut, but the first song he recorded in his first ever studio session was Resume. The song was much different than the verse-driven bars he had previously recorded on his laptop. When he got into the studio, he was inspired by memories of singing Usher and Michael Jackson as a kid with his mom. And in the heat of the moment, he decided to sing the lyrics he had written down instead of spitting them. And when he played Resume for all of his friends, they all kept telling him, you have to drop that officially online. He did drop the song in 2017, and off of repost alone, it got close to 5K listens within a day. Everybody I knew posted it at one time, and then I guess just other people from different places started reposting it, and they actually listened to it, and then it just started going crazy. Eventually, it blew up, garnering over 14 million streams. Crazy because for most people, the first song they record in a studio is not a massive hit to that degree. But then again, most people don't ever get 10 plus million streams on any of the songs they record. Like he says on his new song, Leaked, man, I just came home, now everybody knows me. You've all heard of Candy Pens, right? Well, if the name doesn't ring a bell, I got a good feeling you've seen them before. Now, Candy Pens was named Best Vaporizer of 2018 by High Times due to its combination of popular technology and flashy design. And Candy Pens, well, they've quickly become the go-to choice for vaping in the hip-hop and rap community. They've got some co-signs from DJ Khaled, Fatboy SSE, Young MA, and Amber Rose. Even the one and only ASAP Rocky, yeah. He's got his own signature line called the Flacco Jody Collection. Now Candy Pens has actually made me their YouTube ambassador, the one and only, and they've given me the ability to get you 25% off your entire order. Yeah, there's a link down below. Also use the promo code BTWF25, get some money back, enjoy your vaping. Remember Candy Pens are for those 18 years and older. He kept posting songs online, but made sure he waited until each previous release would flatline in terms of growth and views, then he would drop another banger. Record labels started calling after seeing his first few drops do massive numbers online and reaching the top of the SoundCloud charts. On his song Goat, he says, independent, but I could have got signed. So initially he was showing up to label meetings with no one but his teenage friends, which was exciting, but also overwhelming for the kid, which I can understand. But it was his song Brother that became even bigger for TJ. With the audio alone gaining over 22 million streams on SoundCloud and the visuals sitting at around the same amount of views on YouTube at the time of this recording. When speaking about the song to Rolling Stone, he says, I know how to hide my emotions. I can say what's going on and not make you want to feel down. A lot of time I like to sing music that people can relate to, but not necessarily put them in a depressed mood. In Brothers, I'm saying bodies drop all the time, I don't feel nothing. Basically, I'm trying to say I'm bringing the struggle into a more joyful, melodic sound. Speaking of his sound, it has often been compared to fellow New Yorker A Boogie, whose melodic driven verses without sacrificing his bars has become a staple sound in the newer generation of rap. And although TJ doesn't mind the comparison, he feels like he's beginning to craft his own sound, and in terms of today's rap, he doesn't really relate to the drug heavy use rap. He's more focused on longevity, and hearing him speak, the kid is actually very grounded, and I have a feeling that he'll be around for a long time in this game. Once music started getting to a level where he was so popular online, it was hard for him to attend school normally. Remember, he was 16 when he started to blow up. I remember I put out a couple of songs at 16 that had maybe a few thousand plays online, and I felt like the man. But I can only imagine if you have 20 million hits, there's no way you'd be able to walk around normally like it's enough. But TJ says that he is doing homeschooling to finish his degree because it's really important to him to show his younger fans that he's staying on the right path. Early on, he had cosigns from Lil Durk and Famous Dex who reached out through Instagram. And eventually, he knew a label could take him to the next level. So after initially declining, he ended up hiring a lawyer, going to label meetings, and signing a deal with Columbia Records. In December of 2018, he dropped his first EP, No Comparison, which included the songs Ready For War featuring Y&W Melly and Bad To The Bone, which now has over 1.3 million streams. Now it's time for the part of these videos that I do solely for our female viewers. It's Shoot Your Shot With Lil TJ. What are your chances at dating the man behind the songs? Although he sings a lot about women, he has never actually had an official relationship, but says that now he's looking for someone who he can rely on and wants someone who is really gonna love him for who he is as a person and not just for the clout and success of his rap moniker. So ladies, if you're watching, shoot your shot in his DMs, you never know. He seems like an emotionally aware guy and he says he only writes about what he's feeling. But just remember, 
he is only 17 at the time of this recording, so if you're looking not to get yourselves in trouble, ladies, you gotta wait at least a year. Back to the video. He told XXL that one of his standout moments in his career so far was performing in front of a crowd, I don't know how many people, at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. It was great. I liked the response I got from the crowd. Industry was there, it was lit. It was a good experience. The Wells Fargo Center holds 19,500 people, so that had to have been surreal. As for what's next, TJ says he will still be very selective with his releases, saying, if I don't feel like it's a hit, then I don't feel like dropping it. I won't drop an album until it's perfect. A lot of albums got two or three singles, but the rest is caca. I want every song on it to be a hit. My whole life I wanted more. I didn't get here just to be broke at 28. I have plans, vocal lessons, dance lessons, on some Usher shit. He's been in the studio with LA's own Roddy Rich and been seen with Famous Dex, Designer, and Jay Critch, and many more artists. So I'm sure we have plenty of new music to look forward to from TJ. He also says another Justin Bieber sample could be in the works, but this time he wants to cover One Less Lonely Girl, which in my humble opinion, is one of the most underrated tracks of all time. His rise to fame was pretty fast, so there isn't a crazy long story here on Before They Were Famous, but the guy made good music and people recognized it early. As for the rest of the story, well, you know it because this is before they were famous. As always, I'm Jeremy Heck for Famous News. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, turn your post notifications on so you don't miss a single video. Hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at Jeremy underscore Hecht and let me know who to cover next for this channel or leave a comment below. Dream good, live better. I hope you have one heck of a day and I'll see you in the next video.